Hello everybody, and thank you so much for coming to my talk on how to build serverless applications using Next.js and Prisma. My name is Hassan, I'm a developer advocate at Vercel, and I'm so excited to talk to you about this topic because honestly, databases are difficult and I wanna show you how easy Prisma makes them. I'm gonna break it down from scratch, explaining Next.js and Prisma, then go into some live coding to build out a full stack contacts application. So let's get right into it. In this talk, we'll briefly discuss Next.js and some of its main features, then introduce Prisma, and then finally, we'll be doing some live coding, which will be the majority of the talk. So why would you use Next.js? Well, Next.js, the SDK of the web, is the easiest and most popular way to build production-ready React applications. It's been growing at an incredible rate the past few years, and there are many, many companies from startups to enterprise level using and loving Next.js. So let's talk about some Next.js features and how they can help you become a more effective developer. First off, Next.js provides you with pre-rendering and several data fetching techniques, including server-side rendering and what you're typically familiar with, client-side rendering. This is so you can build any application you want from a static landing page to a large production web application with many moving parts. You can choose what works best for your use case on a per page level to optimize your app's performance and delight your users. Two other cool features that Next.js gives us are file-based routing and API routes. With file-based routing, you can simply create a file in the pages directory and it'll become a route as I'll demonstrate shortly. With API routes, Next.js blurs the intersection of front-end and back-end by giving us the ability to write serverless functions right from within our Next.js repo. In terms of support and optimizations, Next.js comes with built-in support for your favorite developer tools, including TypeScript, CSS and JS libraries, and CSS utility frameworks like Tailwind. It also gives us an image component that does image optimization and lazy loading right out of the box. And finally, with automatic code splitting and bundling, Next.js only loads the JavaScript for the current page that you're on. And this is great because less JavaScript is shipped to the browser, making your application more performant. And with the newest release of Next.js 12, there is now support for middleware, which allows you to run code closer to your users at the edge and enables things like A-B testing and feature flags. There's also a brand new Rust compiler that gives us three to five times faster refresh and builds and React 18 support for things like suspense and React server components. All in all, we get an extensible framework with great defaults that takes care of many things we would have to do manually out of the box and ultimately allows developers developers to be as productive as possible. So as I mentioned before, I work for Vercel, which is a front-end cloud platform. We have this mantra called develop, preview, ship that I want to mention real quick. We enable developers to develop applications using whatever tools they're most comfortable with, then enable them to collaborate with others through tools like Next.js Live and preview URLs that you can share with your team and collaborate on until you're happy with the final result. And then finally, you can ship it by committing to your main branch and letting Vercel handle the rest. It'll immediately be available on Vercel's global edge network and it takes care of a lot of the hard and boring parts for you, like setting up domains, DNS, SSL encryption, caching and validation, and so on. And uh, we're also the creators of Next.js here at Vercel. So now that we've talked about Next.js and Vercel, let's talk about Prisma. So Prisma essentially makes databases easy and allows us to talk to and perform actions on our SQL databases directly from our JavaScript code. So before Prisma and tools like it, if you wanted to use a SQL database, you needed to learn and then write raw SQL. But with Prisma, you can use their API to interact with your database in two easy steps. First, you need to create your schema, and then you can use Prisma's API within your code. So let's take a look at how that works. Here is a sample schema. We first define the type of database on line six, then we include the database URL on line seven that we provision on Railway or Heroku. After this is set up, we define our database schema on line 10. Here, we're telling Prisma that we want a SQL database with the name user that contains an ID field, which is of type integer and auto increments, a first name and email fields, which are both strings, and finally an active field, which is of type Boolean. After we've defined our schema, we can simply use Prisma's API to query it from our newly created SQL table. 
After we've defined our schema, we can simply use Prisma's API to query our newly created SQL table. We use prisma.users.create to create a new row in our users table, passing in an object with the field name and values that we want to use. So in this case, we're passing in Alice as the first name, Alice at prisma.io as the email, and true as the active field, and this will create a row in our table, just like that. So now that we've talked about Next.js and Prisma, let's dive right into the code. This is the demo that we're going to be building. It's called Contacts with a Z, and essentially you can add a contact using this form to the left. You can add a first name, a last name, an email address, and an avatar. And then when you press submit, it adds a contact to the right here with this specific card. So let's dive right into the code for this. I have a typical Next.js project structured here and I'm gonna be going over it. So we have a components folder, which is where all of your React components go and then they get imported into a pages folder in Next.js. So this pages folder, it has the typical app.js and, and then it has an index.js, which is actually the root, the home. So this is where all of the code in localhost 3000 is going to be. And then if we have any other routes, they would show up here. Because of the file-based routing system that Next.js gives us to add a new route, Instead of, you know, in a typical React application, we would create a component. If we wanted to add an about page, for example, we would have to create an about.js component and then import it into app.js or whatever uh, component is going to be rendered and then use a bunch of switch statements from React Router. With Next.js, it's as simple as creating a new file called about.js and, and then we can define a component here. So we're gonna do export default function about and we're simply going to return uh, a div with this is the about page. And all we have to do is save. We go back over here, we go to slash about, and there we go. Our about page is live and it's, it's really that easy. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this for now. You may notice we have an API folder in here as well, and this is where Next.js allows us to define and add serverless functions and use it within and outside of our application, as we'll see shortly. We also have a public folder where we drop all of our assets. For now, we just have our Fivicon. And then finally, we have a styles folder, which contains all of our CSS. Next.js ships with CSS modules by default, which if you haven't heard of is a way to locally scope CSS. So for example, we have a user.module.css folder, which is just a regular CSS folder, um, but specifically for the user component. So if we go to the user component, we'll see that we import the CSS uh, modules folder uh, in this specific way. We use import styles from whatever it is, and then we invoke these styles using styles container, for example, and styles.name. And so if we go to the CSS file, these are just, you know, these class names that we're using. So now that we've talked about the overall structure for our application, let's dive into the homepage code a little more. So I'm gonna open up pages and then index.js, and we're going to talk a little bit about this. So I'm gonna scroll down to the JSX for now. And so essentially we have a head component that Next.js gives us, and it's a way to define meta tags. We're using it for the contacts title as well. And then we have an H2 over here with our header. So let's actually go back to our main uh, localhost 3000. We have our header up here, and then essentially we have a left and then a right if we go down here. All right, so we have two divs that kind of split up our page and they're splitting up our page to the left and to the right, right? Here we have our form and here is where we're displaying our contacts. So we have a typical form here. We have a form and then we have all of our inputs for first name, last name, email address, and avatar on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, we are simply showing all of our users. So for right now, I hard-coded this data in, so it's just uh, it's just essentially me and then a few of my teammates from Vercel. And uh, the, this is coming from the user component over here that we've defined in components. So if you go to it, it just takes you know those four things as props and it displays them using the uh, Next.js image for, for the avatar. Okay, so now that we've talked about our 
JSX down here, let's scroll back up and talk about what we're going to be doing during this live coding. So we have four to-dos in this page. The first thing we're gonna do is connect Prisma and our Postgres database to this application, because right now all we have is a front end. The second thing we're gonna do is create an API endpoint to create a new user. So this is our submit handler function that's going to be run when the user submits their form over here. Right, so as soon as the user submits their form, a submit handler is going to run. And what we want to do is we want to send a post request to an API endpoint that we're going to create for it to query our database and actually add you know, the user there. To do number three is simply going to query our database and get all of our users so that we can then display in our application. And that's to do number four, just you know, mapping over the data that we get and rendering it below as opposed to hard coding this. So let's get right into to-do number one. To add Prisma to our application, the first thing we're gonna do is open up the terminal. I'm gonna open up a new terminal and we're going to run npm install Prisma as a dev dependency. We're gonna wait for this to run and right after Now we're going to do npm install prisma at prisma slash client. So this essentially helps us create an instance of prisma to use in our application. So now that both of those are created, we're going to go ahead and run our first prisma command and that's going to be prisma init. So as soon as we ran this, we saw that a Prisma file was generated and then we have this .env folder as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize all these other folders and we're going to explore these two things. Let me minimize our terminal and we're going to go into this Prisma folder. So this Prisma folder has our schema. As we talked about before, it is saying that we're going to be using Postgres and this is where we can change it if we were using another database. And then it has an environment variable here with our database URL and that's gonna be in this .env file right here. So what we're going to be doing is, let's actually go create our database in Railway. So I'm gonna to go to Google Chrome, I'm gonna to go to railway.app and you can see I'm not logged in at all. We're gonna click start a new project and then we're gonna click provision Postgres. And uh, Railway is essentially spinning up a Postgres database for us to use. And uh, we'll you know, see how easy it is to, to use that. And we're gonna grab that URL and, and put it back into our .env file because that's the database we're gonna to wanna to use. So it looks like Railway is done. Again, we can claim this project if we want to log in, but for now, I'm just going to grab our database URL. I'm going to go to Postgres and then connect, and then we can grab this Postgres connection URL. I'm going to copy it, go back to our VS Code, paste it right here, and hit save. And that's about it. We've I've just connected our database URL to Prisma. We still have to run a command, but I'm going to hold off until we finish our schema to do that. Let's finish our schema by defining the model that we want our database to use. So this is going to be user, and we're essentially going to have it have these four fields right here, uh, but we also need to add a unique field. So we're gonna add that unique field, we're gonna call it ID, we're gonna tell Prisma that it's an integer and that we want to uh, auto increment, and we're also saying that you know this is the ID, this is the unique field that we're using. Um, after that, we can add in the rest. So we have our first name, which is of type string. I'm actually just gonna copy paste this down. We have our last name, which is also of type string, our email, and our avatar. And the last thing we want to do here is we want to map this to our database and tell our database to create a table called users as opposed to user. So we do that with map name users because that just makes more sense. And that's it. We've just defined our schema in Prisma and we've just connected our database. If we go to our .env file, we just pasted that in from Railway, so that's live. Now we're gonna go ahead and open up our terminal. We're gonna clear it and we're gonna run npx prisma db 
push. And what this will do is this will push the changes to our actual Postgres database, and we'll be able to look at it in a second. Okay, so it says your database is now in sync with our schema. That's wonderful. We can run this command called npx Prisma Studio, so we can actually see our database. So you can see that we have a user model over here, and if I click on it, it shows us that there's no rows in this table, but it shows us all of the uh, things that we defined in our schema, right? Our ID, our first name, our last name, our email, and our avatar. So that is wonderful. Now that we've connected Prisma in our Postgres database with Railway, we can get rid of to-do number one and move on to our second to-do. For this to-do, we're going to be creating an API endpoint to create a new user uh, and then send it a post request in our submit handler. So essentially, when the user fills out our add a contact form and presses submit, we want to send a post request to an API endpoint or a serverless function that interacts with Prisma and adds the new user to our database. So we're gonna start out right here by preventing the page from reloading, so prevent default, and then we're going to wrap everything in a try catch statement. So we're going to grab all of the, the first name, last name, avatar, and email, and assign it into an object called body. So let me go ahead and do that. And as soon as we've done this, now we can use the native fetch API to send a post request to our uh, API endpoint, which we're going to create in a second. But for right now, we're going to be calling it create so we can fetch uh, API slash create. And then we pass in an object telling it that this is a, first and foremost, a post request. Uh, we're going to pass in a header that's going to tell it that this is of JSON type. So the content type is application slash JSON. And then finally, we're just going to pass in the body as stringified JSON. And there we go. And then we can finish this up with a catch statement that takes in an error and console.logs it if there is an error. And that's about it. We are, again, grabbing these four fields from the form and we're sending it to this serverless function right here. Let's now create our API endpoint. We're gonna go to our API folder, new file, and we're gonna be calling it create.js. And the first thing we wanna do here is import Prisma. We have this lib folder that we haven't talked about, but uh, you're gonna wanna create a lib folder with the prisma.js. And I just grabbed this from the documentation. This essentially just spins up a new Prisma instance for us to use. So going back to our API endpoint or serverless function, we're going to import Prisma uh, from this exact folder, so lib slash Prisma, and then we're going to start our serverless function. So it's gonna be export default async function called handle that takes a request and a response. And essentially we're going to be destructuring all of that information that we're getting from our index.js file. So our first name, last name, our avatar, and our email, we're going to be grabbing it from request.body because that's what we sent in. And then we're going to create a new variable called result. And this is where we're going to be using Prisma's API. So we're gonna do prisma.user, because that's the name of our table, dot create. And uh, this takes in uh, an object inside data. And that's just going to be those things. So for first name, our last name, our avatar, and our email. And at the end here, we're just going to do response.json result to return back the result. So that is pretty much it. We can go back to our index.js. So to recap really quickly, we have this try catch statement here that grabs first name, last name, and avatar from our form. And we send it to this serverless function here called create that we just made. And what this does is it uses Prisma to add this to our database. So we're gonna open up our terminal, we have our app running on this window, and over here we're gonna type npx Prisma Studio to open up the database so we can visualize it. So right now there's nothing in here. We're gonna go back to our contact app and we're going to add something. So I'm going to just add a user with my information. We're going to see how this works. So this is going to be the avatar, which fun fact, you can go to github.com slash whatever username you're at and do .png, and then you get 
uh, an image. So we're gonna press submit. We're gonna go back to Prisma Studio and reload it. And we can see that our user is here now. We've just successfully interacted with our Postgres database from our front end. So we can go back to our code and the other thing we want to do is add a little toast to our application so that when the user clicks submit, we get a notification saying that a user has been created. So we're going to be using the React Hot Toast library for this. So we're going to import toast and toaster from React Hot Toast. You're going to want to npm install this. I just did that. And, and then we can at the end of our try statement, we can do toast.success and pass in whatever message we want here. So like contact added. Uh, and then we have to add this toaster component uh, at the end. So we're gonna do that here. And that should be it. If we go back to our form now and we populate it again with some dummy data, hello world, Hassan at world.com. And then we I grab my that same avatar. So over here dot png and I press submit you can see we get this contact at a toast at the top so that's exactly what we wanted now that we can add contacts to our application using our newly created API endpoint we finish to do number two so that we can move on to number three so for this to do we're going to be creating another API endpoint to grab all of our contacts to display them in our application so we're going to be using a library called SWR which is a fantastic library for data fetching so we're going to do import use SWR from SWR and then we're going to be using this down here. So we're gonna have a fetcher function that essentially just uses the native fetch API and then returns the response as JSON. And then we're going to do const data error equals use SWR. And we're going to be querying our API called get all. And we'll, we'll create this in a second. And we pass in our fetcher function in here and we wanna pass in one more parameter, which is our refresh interval. And we're going to make this one second. So let's go ahead and create this API endpoint. So we're gonna to go to our API folder that has our create.js and we're going to create get all.js. And in here, we're going to import Prisma again, like we did. So import Prisma from lib slash Prisma. And then we're going to create our handle function. So export default async function handle. And again, this takes a request and a response. And this is actually gonna be super quick. We're going to be creating our result variable again, and we're gonna be using Prisma with uh, await prisma.user.findMany. So that's the Prisma command to actually return everything in your database. And then we're just going to send this back as JSON. And that's it. So now we can go back to our application. We've used SWR to send a get request to our get all serverless function over here, and it should return everything and store it in data. And then if there's any errors, it'll do that as well. Uh, we're missing a comma over here. So let's actually just console log this data to visualize it. So data is data. So we're gonna go back to our application. We're going to go to our console and we're gonna see that we get data, which is an array. And we can see that it passes in the information from our database, which is fantastic. You can see we have our ID, our first name, our last name, our avatar. Uh, so we have all of that information as an array of objects. So now that we have that, to do number three is done already and we can move on to our final to do, which is to actually map over this data from our Postgres database and render it below. So we have this information stored in this data variable here from our SWR and we can just map over it down here. So the first thing we wanna do is delete the static data so that we can map over our actual data from Postgres. So I'm gonna delete everything except one or we can just comment it out for now. And then we're going to say, if data exists, we want to map through data and we're going to destructure the first name, last name, avatar, email, and ID. And then we're going to be returning this. So we're gonna be 
returning all of this, and it's going to have the same format, right? Of user first name is equal to going to be first name. So we're going to do that. First name is equal to first name. Last name is equal to last name. We can have this avatar over here and our email over here. And then we just have to add an ID prop so React doesn't yell at us. So ID equals ID. And uh, that's pretty much it from over here. We are mapping over our data. We're grabbing our first name, last name, avatar, email, and ID. And we're essentially returning this user over here. So I forgot parentheses over here. We're going to save and this should work. So now that we've mapped over our data, let's go back to our application and see if that was reflected. So going back, we see that it we do show those two contacts that are in our database. I'm going to go over to Prisma Studio and we see that these two rows, Hassan and Hello, are both displayed here. So now let's add a contact and watch it persist over here to the right. So I'm going to add my coworker, Steven. So Steven Tay, Microsoft.com, and then we'll add his avatar. We'll press submit. It says contact is added, and we can see him here in real time. And the great thing about this, you know, this isn't in React state, right? So if we reload, we have the same information that's still there. And this is because this information is stored in our Postgres database. So I go back to our Prisma Studio and I reload. You know, the database information is right here. We've just built our serverless application using Next.js API routes, Prisma, and a Postgres database hosted on Railway. But there's one issue. It's not going to scale very well due to connection pooling. This happens because each user request triggers a serverless function, which opens up a new connection to the database. In the case of our app, every time a user fills out the form to the left and creates a new contact, that opens up a new connection to our database. So if 100 users click create new contact, 100 serverless functions are invoked, and 100 temporary connections are made with our database. The problem is there's a connection limit on our database, and if that gets exhausted, requests will start to fail. Not only that, but functions opening up and closing connections adds latency and makes our app slower. This is where connection poolers come in, and lucky for us, Prisma has released their very own data proxy in early access. Let's take a look at how we can use this in our serverless application. To get started with Prisma Data Proxy, navigate to cloud.prisma.io and click New Project. Fill out your project name. We're going to type in the name of our project, which is Contacts. I'm going to be importing it because I have it in a GitHub repository called Prisma Data Proxy. I'm going to click Next. And then we're going to be using our own database. I'm going to paste in that database URL from the Railway Postgres database that we have. And then I'm going to click Create New Project. I'm going to wait for it to spin up, and then there it is, our data proxy URL. We have it right here. We can copy it, and then we can go to the Prisma documentation to follow how to set it up in our application. So let's open up our code editor with Chrome, and we're going to follow these steps for how to use this data proxy in our Prisma application. The first step is to generate a data proxy connection string, which we just did install the latest Prisma dependencies, which we've done already. Now we're going to be enabling the feature flag in the Prisma schema file. But before we do this, I'm going to navigate to our .env, and I'm going to replace our railway URL with our new Prisma connection string. Just start with Prisma. And then I'm going to follow step number three, which is essentially to enable this feature flag in our prisma.schema file. So I'm going to navigate to the Prisma folder, schema.prisma, and we're going to be adding that line right here. We're going to save. The next thing is making sure the data source URL is read from our .env, which we've just done over here. And step number five is to add one more environment variable to tell it the Prisma client that we're going to be using the, the data proxy. And then we're going to run npx prisma generate to actually generate our new Prisma client. So I'm going to open up our terminal. I'm going to type pr npx prisma generate. Press enter. And it looks like it just updated our Prisma client. So now we're using the Prisma data proxy in our application. To recap, the Prisma data proxy sits in between our serverless functions and our database in order for us to avoid the connection pooling problem. So it helps us scale. It also reduces latency in our application. 
The final step is deploying our application to Vercel. So navigate to vercel.com slash new. We're gonna import our Git repository for our contacts app. I called it Prisma Data Proxy. I'm gonna press import. We don't wanna create a team. And to configure our project, we're going to need to add some environment variables. One important thing about the Prisma Data Proxy is that it can't run migrations directly on it. So we're going to be running migrations on our Postgres database URL directly. So we're going to create an environment variable for that called migrate database underscore URL. We're gonna paste in our railway database address, and then we're gonna have our database URL, which points to Prisma's data proxy. I'm gonna go back to our code, our .env file, and grab this right here, paste it in, we're gonna add it, and then we can deploy. The final thing we have to do before we deploy is actually go to our package.json over here, and we have to add these three lines, and that tells Prisma to run migrations on this migrate database URL instead of the main database URL, and it also tells Prisma that we're using our data proxy. So we're gonna go ahead and press deploy, and then wait to see what we get. And that's it. It looks like we successfully deployed our project to Vercel. Let's go to our dashboard and then click on our domain to see it live. And I added this sample user over here. Um, I can add another one. Let's go to um, github.com slash Steven Tay. And then we'll add my coworker Steven into here. And then we'll put his avatar.png. We're going to press submit. And we can see the contact has been added and we can see it here in real time. So our application is working. So there, so there we have it. We successfully deployed a scalable serverless application using Next.js in the Prisma data proxy. To find the code for this repo, go to github.com slash nutlope slash prisma dash data dash proxy. And I'm on Twitter at nutlope. In case you have any questions, my DMs are wide open. Thanks so much for coming to my talk and have a great day.